He talk around the nation, and here in the low country, it's about affordable housing. I sit down one-on-one -on -one with Melissa Moore, who's the Director of Operations for Housing for All, Mount Pleasant, for a special edition of Quintess Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quintess Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview later on iHeartRadio. Melissa Moore. Quinn Washington. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Well, I'm doing great as actually as well. Good. I know that you have been extremely busy because now you are obviously the director of operations for Housing for All in Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. And the last time I did an interview we were with you for Quintus Full Subs was about We Are Family. Yes. Well, what got you from We Are Family to now Housing for All in Mount Pleasant? So the work that I did last year uh, with the city of Charleston to build the resource center that is now still operational um, got me uh, in touch with people who are working on affordable housing issues. And I saw that there was an opening at Housing for All Mount Pleasant and I jumped at it because I'm actually from Mount Pleasant and I've seen you know, the entire country is going through an affordable housing crisis. Uh, so it really meant a lot to me to be able to work in my hometown to try to diversify the housing options there. What are the housing options right now in Mount Pleasant? There aren't very many. <laughs> I mean, so starter homes are starting at upwards of 400,000, like upwards of 500,000 actually. And then you see, you know, the median rent is about $1,400 all the way up to $2,400 for small apartments. And that means that folks like me, folks like, you know, who are teachers and firefighters and people who've lived there for a long time, seniors, actually are being priced out of the market. You talk about the firefighters and teachers. Yep. How does workforce housing come into that discussion? Well, you know, a lot of people complain about the traffic in Charleston and the traffic in Mount Pleasant. Um, it's gotten worse over the years, and that's because 72% of the workforce has to live outside of Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing a lot of uh, burden on the road infrastructure because people are commuting into town for their jobs. And you talk about those jobs. How many more, how many jobs would come to Mount Pleasant when affordable housing is actually doable? <laughs> yeah, right. I know. So industry is going to continue to actually push, you know, to move past Mount Pleasant because mm -hmm. there isn't uh, a, a pool of people you know, of talent for them to choose from. And a lot of restaurants have even had to shut down because they can't keep staff. Because if you live in Somerville, chances are you're going to want to work in Somerville or somewhere closer. Sure. Um, so we would probably see more economic opportunity if affordable housing was available in Mount Pleasant. And I know from the Charleston City Paper article, Adam Manor wrote this actually. He says this quote, last year, housing for all Mount Pleasant was formed in an effort to coordinate a robust, lasting response to the town's affordable housing problem. The nonprofit rules and recommendations put, put forth, that is, by the town's affordable housing task force. Question, any new recommendations right now? Um, any new recommendations from our work? In the affordable housing uh, task force? Well, so we are we're actually the result of the Affordable Housing Task Force. So there is no more Affordable Housing Task Force. Okay. Um, what came out of it was the birth of Housing for All Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. um, we just got our 501c3 in November, and I just officially came on last month. So um, we actually already have a uh, project in the works. We're already talking to a developer and a builder to about you know, uh, developing 25 to 40 attainable housing units in Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know what that's going to look like yet because the details are still being worked out. So um, we, we have a couple of projects in the works, and we also are working on a strategy to preserve any units that are already affordable and keep them affordable. Um, so we want to work with existing communities to make sure that they do not get pushed out of Mount Pleasant make sure that development pressures are eased and that they can remain attainable, if that makes sense. You talk about those existing units and communities. Mm -hmm. How many are they left in Mount Pleasant? Oh, well, so there, that's a good question. I don't have the exact number, but there are some old communities that have been there for a long time. And we want to make sure that they get to stay there and that they get to use the land the way that they always have. Yeah. And that they, you know, have some... Um, control over their destiny. 
And I know when I interviewed, I believe I will interview that Will Freeman for Clinton School Subs recently, but he we talked about affordable housing as well. And I believe he wanted to see if, when it comes to affordable housing, if developers could somehow contribute to the community, whether right. it be 20% or whatnot. Yeah. What are you looking for from developers right now? Well, um, it would be great, honestly, if any new developments went up, if people would, uh, if developers would commit to preserving at least a piece of what they're building and making it affordable or attainable. Um, we don't know yet. Again, everything is still uh, in the works, so we have a couple of projects that are in the works, and um, I'll be very happy to report back to you as soon as we um, we have our approval. Sure, and I know that you just oh, sure does. And I know that just recently you talked to Adam about this, and he and you said this quote: "We're talking to landowners, developers, and looking at existing housing stock to see if they, any of that can be converted to tenable housing." Okay. And I'm wondering. How many landowners, developers, have you been talking to thus far? So we've been talking to two so far. Um, and honestly, you know, what everybody wants out of this is not just to slap a few houses here and there. We want to build community. So we okay. want to build a real intentional community in Mount Pleasant. Okay. And I think that's something that everybody can really buy into. Um, but right now we are we have two, two uh, conversations in the works. In the works. Mm-hmm. Where should this conversation about affordable housing go next in your mind? I think, you know, hopefully, well, the next step for us is hopefully to have a project underway in 2020. Um, and I think that this is not just a conversation about Mount Pleasant, it's about our entire region. So how can we grow responsibly? How can we have responsibility to communities that have been um, with us for generations? How can we grow um, with responsibility to our environment and the flooding issues that are happening, and um, how can we build communities that are intentional and healthy? So, and I, I know you, you, you basically talk about Mount Pleasant for housing for all, and I know you just said, "Hey, we're talking to all of these communities here." Mm -hmm. How many existing years right now are in Charleston County as far as needing affordable housing? Oh gosh, <laughs> I would say. I mean, this is a, this is a growing national crisis, and it's the million dollar question. Nobody really has great answers. Okay. Um, I will say that you know uh, we're working as a region with other people who are working on affordable housing and attainable housing uh, to come up with solutions. So we're not doing it in a silo. Mm -hmm. We're working together as a region because it affects us all as a region. Um, and we're also working on building a database or of attainable units sure. in Mount Pleasant. And I think some similar efforts are under the way underway in, in North Charleston and in the city of Charleston as well. Well, that's so great to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you obviously are the director of operations for housing for all, right. but I gotta take you to something that's going on today that sure. you know all about. Yeah. And there's gonna be a symposium, uh, for lack of a better word, for uh, hate crimes that are going on in Charleston. Yes. I know that you're not on the panel, but I don't believe. No, no. If you were on the panel or if you were sitting in the audience tonight, what exactly do you want to hear from those speakers? Well, sitting in the audience, I don't want to skirt around the issues. I think sometimes in Charleston we have the tendency to be respectable and polite and not talk about things that are unpleasant. Um, so I really hope that they get to the truth and the meat of the issues about communities that are affected by hate um, because downtown Charleston has become, uh, especially, has become a little less loving, I will say, uh, especially for people who belong to marginalized communities. So I am hoping that, and I think the panelists honestly will touch on it. I'm very excited to know that um, Vanity Reed is going to yes. be on the panel, panel and um, Jasana McDaniel, I think that's great. Um, I think it shows great strides by the City of Charleston Police Department to bring people onto the panel who are going to tell the truth. But what is that truth about hate crimes that we don't know about here in the City of Charleston? Well, I guess, you know, we don't have a real hate crime statute, so there is no real definition about what a hate crime is, but there are certainly some hate-biased and hate-motivated incidents that happen around here. Um, you know, with Kendra, um, the assault of um, Kendra Martinez, you know, the way that it was portrayed in the media, 
as not bias motivated. It was portrayed as um, like that she brought that on herself. I think that's a shame. I'm glad that you know steps have been taken to to address that and reverse that. And I appreciate that um, that people who uh, made the mistake are held accountable to that. Um, but you know we saw at the resource center um, a hate motivated incident where. The entire, you know, all the doors and windows were um, were broken out by someone who was discriminating against us for running the center. So, you know, uh, it happens. You just don't hear about it a lot. Let me get back to Holly Fall. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, you have been the director of operations since last year, I believe. Uh huh. What do you want the headline to be about housing for all in Mount Pleasant in twenty twenty? In 2020, I would love for the headline to be that uh, Housing for All Mount Pleasant works with the community to build a beautiful, affordable housing development that has public art, community gardens, and um, <laughs> it's a beautiful and central community for all. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah. Well, a lot of people will agree with you on that as well. <laughs> well, Melissa Moore, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you. I appreciate it too. Great time. All right. Yes, yes, yes.